Hi, I'm Sheena Strader with L2L Support, and welcome to this tips and tricks video on creating a checklist. L2L Interactive Checklists enable the recording of data and task completion electronically inside L2L. This allows a site to leverage L2L reporting tools to recall and report on checklist data, making them a powerful tool for managing processes and identifying opportunities for improvement. Please note, you must have author permissions within the document settings in order to create a document checklist. Now let's get started. First, you will navigate to the standard work documents in the left-hand menu and select all documents. Here you will select add new to create your document and complete your document details. From there, you would create your checklist template. We do have a video on document creation if you would like more information on that process as well. For purposes of this video, to show you the template creation, I will choose a document that is created. Select View Template. Edit Template. On the Checklist Edit Template page, the name, description, number, and category are populated according to the document cover page information. Below this are a series of settings for checklists, that control its relationship to other portions of L2L, as well as the requirements when filling out the document. First, you will see production settings. You have the option to have your checklist be production standard work. This can launch the checklist on the operator portal to drive other required activities during production, such as scale calibration or end of shift cleaning. Your choices include shift boundary, repeat, repeat daily. Next, you will see Launch a dispatch if values exceed reject limits. Use to designate the dispatch type and trade of the follow-up dispatch to be launched when recording a numerical task outside of reject limits. Here you'll see checklist include settings. Pre-work or post-work, which controls the application of any pre- or post-work checklist associated to the checklist. And lastly, you will see other settings. Require answers to all questions before closing a checklist. Require checklist to be marked closed before allowing associated dispatches to complete. Require the trade and duration for project time data. Require username and password to save a checklist. Please note, this feature does not work for SAML users. And then, only show these optional fields. Now you can start creating your checklist task using the plus button. Once the task is visible, you can use the minus button to remove it. Your options for questions are a task description, used for entering instruction and does not require an answer, short or long input, anything over 50 characters would need to be long input, a checkbox is used when an item is required, yes or no answers, which allow you to auto launch a follow-up dispatch depending on your answer. You have date and time if needed, a numeric input, which is used to set your control and reject limits. If the answer is outside the limits, the system will launch a follow-up dispatch based on the selection we chose above. You have drop-down select, these can be choices that you customize for your answer sections. You can also choose to launch a dispatch based on a given response. You will see table and dynamic table. These tasks give you a tabular form to fill out. You will see columns and task descriptions. You can add items vertically and horizontally. Lastly, you have production limits inspection. You will see this task will generate a limits inspection when a product is selected for the checklist. This will automatically populate inspection limits that are set up through product categories and products. Then you will give a short description of your revision and save new revision. This concludes the video on how to create a checklist. Thank you for watching. If you have any additional questions, feel free to go to our other tips and tricks videos or reach out to us at L2L Support.